It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Riscola Stevens. Well, a very good, bright, clear, and crisp morning to you out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is always an honor and a privilege to have you listening in on us. Uh, this morning, I have the one and only Pam Worth. Uh, she is on the West Coast. Good morning, Miss Pam. Good morning, sir. And it is chilly here. I got out this morning to walk the dog and walked right back in to get a jacket. <laughs> and uh, in the background back there, who uh, many times remains quiet when I have Miss Pam with me, uh, but nevertheless, he is there doing the necessary work and making everything uh, function so smoothly. Thank you, Captain Hook. Greatly yeah. appreciate it. Well, it looks smooth on the outside. On the inside, it's, uh, it's a work of art. <laughs> <laughs> I got... I don't know how cool it is over there, but we've got 61 degrees here. Uh, we're looking at about 10 miles an hour in the wind. I took the dog out. First thing I do in the morning, uh, take the dog out so he's not bothering me as, as we're doing the show. And it was really, really nice to be out there. This one. What a pleasant change because many times we walk out the door, uh, it's like, <laughs> it's like walking into a sauna. And what a change it was this morning. Yeah, it's about 63 over here right now when the wind's blowing. Seas will be about two, four feet over here if you're going to go out fishing today, so you better have a decent-sized boat. Or and I think we've got about the same over here as well. How do you think this is going to affect the fishing now? Oh, it's going to turn it on. This cooler weather, uh, mm-hmm. trout bite is just going to jump up really fast. Um, hopefully, we've got we are just started our kingfish uh, tournament season, so hopefully the cooler water will bring the kingfish closer to shore because I've got a kingfish kayak tournament next uh, weekend. Uh, where's that one at? Right here. It's going to be, it's the first time that we've ever done it. We're just starting to organize it. We organized it very, very quickly. But one of the main uh, sponsors of the big boats said, hey, guys, we got a stage. Let's make it happen. So it, it'll probably be really small. I doubt we're going to have a lot of boats. But anyhow, uh, it's 100 percent payout. So I'm looking forward to it. Wow. Wow. And the sponsor, who's, who's the sponsor of this thing? Um, There's going to be a number of different sponsors. And you asked if you give me two seconds, I will look it up. But well, I, I you know, when I introduced Pam, I introduced Pam as one of the top female kayak anglers here in Florida. That's the way that I introduced her. Well, she was involved in a tournament. I'm going to let her give you all the details here in a moment, but I want to give you the kind of a lowdown real quick. She was in, involved in a tournament over there in Louisiana, showed all the guys up again, <laughs> uh, did leave them a few fish before she left. But one of the things that I wanted to bring up was is they found her to be the top female angler of the east and west coast of florida so uh i what i have the way that i have been introducing her has been verified by the fishing tournament oh thank you <laughs> but um you're sweet on this on this kingfish tournament it's called um kayak kings uh it's on my instagram angler armory is one of the sponsors and then we have bonafide kayaks uh, red Red Tail Republic, Tourney Tag, West Coast Kayaks, which is here in the Bay Area, Trophy, Trophy Takers Outdoors, which they have a Those TV are show. Bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So you know, I was thinking maybe one or two sponsors, but it sounds like there's a bunch of sponsors. Yeah, um, for since we Ty and I put this together in six weeks, <laughs> I think we. It's pretty good. Yeah, Ty's done most of the work. Ty Roth. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun and it's pretty much close to a winner take all. And if for some reason none of the yaks catch a king, then we'll roll part of the money over till the spring tournament and the rest will be paid out under Spanish mackerel because the macs are everywhere. You, I mean, you can walk wow. on Spanish mackerel right now in Tampa Bay. Walk on water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I want to, I want to talk about the tournament that you were in. Okay. It um, was first, the- first off, you just missed. 
our, our buddy Michael, I mean, by what, a day or so? Or had it already come through by the time you went through the panhandle? It already went through. So you had to deal with that. Yeah. I'm sure that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I, obvious for obvious reasons, did not go down to the beach area of the panhandle. Uh, but my brother lives in Pensacola, so that was my first stop, Tampa to Pensacola. Mm. But the, yeah. they had just opened up I-10 between Tallahassee and Panama City. And, uh, it, it, it lo- in certain areas, it looked like a, a bomb went off. Like you see the wow. old black and white movies of them yep. testing the bombs with all the trees, yep. you know, bent over or split in half and no bark on them. It, it, it was, yep. it was amazing. I saw two cars that were still under trees. Mm. It, it was amazing. Wow. Yeah. All, all too familiar. I went, um, I lived in Cutler Ridge when uh, Hurricane Andrew came through, August 24th, 1992. Uh, Very similar situation. I saw a um, one of those rental trucks. I don't think it was a U-Haul. It was a rider. It was a rider truck, a big rider truck on top of a building. I had picked this thing up and set it on top of a building. Some of the things that you see are just absolutely astounding, jaw-dropping. You know, if you didn't have a picture of it, nobody would believe you. So you made your way through this horrible thing and made it out to louisiana yeah i I had brought extra water i filled up uh my kayak and whatever space i had left over in my car with uh, water and dropped it off at one of the uh staging areas you know the least i could do yeah Yeah. made it to louisiana did some practice fishing fished with captain eddie who's also on the cajun rod uh, pro staff and we killed it. We had such a fun day. In literally mm-hmm. two and a half hours, I think we caught 25 redfish. It was crazy. Oh, my goodness. It was crazy. Wow. It was crazy. I have a picture of the re- some of the redfish in a bucket because we were doing a fish fry afterwards for some of the other guys. And, I mean, we threw away more, much more, obviously, than what we kept. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Wow. So when you're red fishing, I know you prefer lures, right? So that's what you're using was lures? Yeah. The, uh, the red, the IFA, the Inshore Fishing Association is 100% lure only. There is no bait oh. used. Yeah. It's oh. 100% lure. And, uh, so these, go ahead. the lures that you're using? Um, I used a paddle tail that I got there. I learned to use a popping cork, which is a big thing in Louisiana. I'd mm-hmm. never used a popping cork before. I mean, a popping cork in Tampa Bay, the, the, I think the redfish would run for the hills, but we'll see. I'm going to try it this <laughs> afternoon here. And, um, yeah, uh, my top water wasn't as effective as I thought it would be. Uh, and then my Miradine by Miralor was a very successful bait. I was surprised. A bunch of the guys in Louisiana were very surprised too. I didn't catch the big bull red that I wanted, which is, uh, novice error on my point, but uh, next year I'll get it. But I did. But, uh, you, yeah, but you caught 20, how many? 20? Tw- 25, 30 redfish. It was crazy. In, in how long? A couple of hours? Yeah, like under three hours yeah. with Captain You guys Eddie. were kicking behind. Yeah. I like, mean, you were just kicking. That's it, that's great. That was a lot of fun. It was it was so much fun. And we were flinging them into the boats. If you see some of those <laughs> those bass guys, you know how they turn around and take those little bass and just kind of fling them into the boat with their mm-hmm. rod? Okay, we were taking eight and nine pound redfish with our Cajun rods and literally flinging them, bringing them over into the boat like that. That's how amazing these rods are. <laughs> I know. I felt like um, you know, I'm laughing because I had a similar situation many years ago. I don't know. I think I've shared this with you before. When I had a boat many years ago, I was well, probably about 20 miles offshore, and we found a, a tree out there and got in the middle yeah. of almost out to the northbound shipping lane. Uh, there's this tree floating upside down on the top of the tree, which was the bottom. Uh, at the top there was peanut dolphin. Below that were a little bigger dolphin, and below that was this huge marlin that kept coming and going yeah. through this. Well, we got everything started. We were doing what you're talking about. <laughs> we're pulling these 11 and 12 pound, um, we're just horsing them out of the water, a yep. dolphin, just into the boat and, and, and throwing, literally throwing a hook out there with a little piece of uh, mullet skin on it. I mean, it wasn't even any meat, just the skin itself and, and doing it over and over. And so that's why I was laughing. It brought back that memory. Yep. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It is. You don't get those days very often, but when you do, that's, oh you my know. goodness. They are unforgettable. It's like a shot of adrenaline. But, yeah, mm. I ended up uh, – I felt very fortunate considering I was fishing against 
the top kayak anglers in the United States for, you know, for, for saltwater. And, uh, I ended up with second biggest trout. I had the biggest trout till about 10 minutes before deadline. And a guy walked in with one a little bit bigger. But, uh, I was, I was really happy. I felt good for my first trip out there, not knowing the area, not knowing what lures or anything to look for. But, uh, it, it was fun. Well, I'll tell you what, for, that was your first time, right? In yep. that area? Yep. <laughs> I think you did pretty doggone well. No, yeah, thanks. That just kind of shows the skill level. That, uh, you know, what you have and that you're able to do that. I know if I went personally, me, if I went out there, I'd probably come back with water. I'd be about it. The most I caught would be water or, or some real estate, right? Get some oh, ground or something. Oh, I, I, I did real well. And they don't have the big mangrove trees that we have here. They have mangrove bushes. And yes, I did catch my uh, percent of mangrove bushes. Uh-huh. So, uh, so I kept the tradition uh-huh. alive. But yeah, and I also ended up um, East Coast uh, overall. I was second behind Derek Engel, and Derek Engel just won on the boat side. The boats went this weekend, and he just ended up winning top uh, boat for the West Coast of Florida. So I don't think I did so bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I know that um, the outcome was... Uh <laughs> the outcome was, uh, you know, excellent for you, and and uh, I'm proud of you. You did really well. You know, you 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 proved what I have been saying all along. Well, thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I, I I do we have Robert on, or we don't have Robert on? Yes, we do. We Ooh. do. We have Robert. And congrats, Good Bam. Uh, thank you, sir. That's Good morning, awesome. Robert. Good morning. How's everybody? <laughs> Sounds like Pam had a good week. Yeah, I did. I did. I'm still buzzing was, about it. You came in second? You had the second largest trout? Yep, I got second largest trout in Louisiana. So I felt good about that. That's great. Yeah, but they and, found And her. how many times have you fished in Louisiana? Uh, that was my first time. Not bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, really, I'm saying. Not bad at all. And And they also announced her as the top female angler on the East and West Coast. Well, I agree with them there. So, <laughs> thank you. So, it was, so it was a warning a to, to you people out there: if, if she's coming to your neighborhood and fishing, just stay home that day. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I learned so much. No, no, go go on out. She loves the people to talk to. So exactly. go on out anyway. So. Exactly. <laughs> I want to tell you, I have never yep. met a more gracious group of people than the people at Bayside Marina. I mean, they're, they're kind of all related to each other. It's like. Oh, I'll go talk to my cousin Bobby Boo or whatever. But these pe- they helped everybody. They went out of their way to say, well, I think you might find this here, there, or whatever. What, what a great, generous group of people. Yeah. i got to well, tell I, you, just from my communications with the fishermen in Louisiana, they're all like that. Yeah, yeah. They are just a nice group of people. Um, I, I, I run stuff in the magazine for a few of them and they're just wonderful people. Um, love them all. So we have the, um, crappie psychic, uh, Captain Fulce. He comes on every once in a while. He's from Louisiana and, uh, you can tell by his demeanor while he's on the radio. He is somebody that will go out of his way to see to it. If you don't, if you need help, he'll see to it that you get the help, whether it's help that he can provide for you personally or it's help that, uh, through the network of people that he knows. He would do, he's that kind of guy uh, it's just a kind of reflection uh on on those those people that are there I, I ran into the very similar thing when i was in the panhandle of florida many you know years ago many moons ago um people there were you know to strangers they were willing to you know reach out okay what do you you know what is it that i can do for you how can i help you that kind of thing um and and with each other as as evidenced by what is going on Right now, through this uh, healing process of uh, all the damage that has happened up there, um, one of the gas stations was giving away free gas at one time for a five-gallon uh, maximum and was giving away free gas. Somebody else was giving away free food um, and, and people volunteering right and left. So it's, 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 it's that unity that I don't know what it is about up there, but, you know, you get up there and you kind of you feel it. You really do. It's a different atmosphere, completely different atmosphere. Well, Captain Bourgeois for, um, uh, Bourgeois Fishing Charters in New Orleans has a seaplane. I don't know if anybody's seen his stuff. 
um, in the magazine or online anywhere, but he has a seaplane and he flies people out to remote areas where they can fish in Louisiana. Oh, wow. And he sent me a, a video the other day of takeoff at sunrise mm. in his seaplane. And I, and I went, Oh God, I want to do that so bad. He goes, come mm. on, <laughs> come on, do it. Uh, I, I had the fortune of being out there this morning as the sun came up and it was just astounding, just amazing. <laughs> People say there's no God. I, I can't, sorry, I disagree. It was so beautiful, just unbelievable. And then, of course, the uh, nice and crisp. I'm sure it's the same thing where you're at too, Robert, right? Nice and crisp this morning. Oh, it is absolutely beautiful this morning, yep. So anything absolutely. going on in the way of, of tournaments that you want to share with us? Not really much in the way of tournaments. The new magazine did come out a couple of days ago. Um, there's an article in there on things about the um, Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, if anybody's going. There's a couple of links in there that you can click on if you're in the magazine, give you a little information before you get there, which might be handy. Uh, their schedule of events is, is one of them. Um, so that's in there. There's some great stories, and I uh, hope everybody enjoys the magazine. Yeah. And, and but, uh, while I'm thinking about it, you are willing to, or you're open uh, to people sending you uh, different fishing experiences for the magazine, correct? Everything in our magazine is from the readers. Everything right. in there. So, so yes, it, absolutely. That's where everything comes from is from you folks out there. So, and yeah. it's Florida Fisherman Magazine found online. Um, correct. And I think it's uh, www.flfishmag.com. I think Pam has something. What were you going to say, Pam? I'm yeah, sorry. I was just telling him I uh, I still owe him an article. Sorry, boss. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. And and I'm going to hold you to it. I'll just keep reminding you every Sunday. So. There we go. There we go. <laughs> just don't tell me to look it up on YouTube. <laughs> That's an inside joke. It's so. not on YouTube. So. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't do much on YouTube. <laughs> I have other people that understand it, and I don't. So. Oh. Yeah, it's like well, Instagram. I don't get Instagram at all, so I, I don't understand yeah. it, so I don't do it. <laughs> well, I'll yeah, I'm show looking, you Instagram. That I'm I can do. looking at the radar at uh, the general area on the east and west coast. There's a bunch of really, really small scattered showers, but really there's nothing other than that. It's, it's, I'd say it's it about 90% crystal clear. clear. Yeah. But there is a small craft warning for tomorrow. I, I looked at that this morning because it was so beautiful out. I pulled it up, and it said there's a severe weather alert for your area for tomorrow. And I'm like, what the hell could that be? Wow. And it's a small craft warning. It's supposed to have 20 knot winds tomorrow. So <laughs> That's when you sit on the shore and fish. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Or you take a really big boat, one or the other. So. Yeah, that's the nice <clears throat> thing about the bay here in Tampa Bay is uh, you can always find a sheltered area. Away from the wind, especially if you're in a kayak. Yeah, you can hear. You can hear um, over in. Uh, you, you can always go fish the Indian River Lagoon and stay oh. in, inside and have a great day. So, hey, Robert, you know, there's, there's always a place to go fishing. So that's right. You're over for some reason. I because you were on vacay. I put huh? you down in the Keys, but you're over by the Indian River Lagoon, right? Correct. I'm in Jensen Beach. Oh yeah, well, we're going to have to have a date. <laughs> She's okay. married. We can do that. I'm in a fishing date. (laughs) It's a fishing date. Everybody knew what I meant. They're they're okay with everybody. We're going to hook up. No, not a hook up. Yep. Hook up. I I don't know how you're going to get me in a kayak, but we'll figure it out. (laughs) You get get one of the kayaks. I'm about 6'4", about 250, and... Uh, I, I've looked at him before and gone, nah. Uh, <laughs> get one of the kayaks like the Hawaiian guys have with the pontoons on either side. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. I can, <laughs> give me one of those. I'm 5'10", and I'm not going to mention my weight, but, you know, it, 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 we'll figure it out. Either that or I've, I've got some friends well, over there, and we'll go rent a boat. <laughs> oh, no, no, I've got friends over here with boats, so that's not a problem. But I've never done kayaking, and I do want to try it, but... uh I just look at him and go, well, I think I should use about a 14-foot kayak, maybe. <laughs> Robert, you need to try it out in a swimming pool first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I'll just take one over to the beach and float around for a while, bathtub beach. So. I could see you out on the sand, sitting in the sand on this thing, pretending that you're paddling. 
I could just see that's that. correct. That's, that's, exa- that's exactly that's exactly the image you should carry with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Always, it's so much fun to have you on. Um, anything about the water quality you want to share with us? I'm, I'm, I've got a breakout take, but, but I want to the find out. the the red tide is moving all over the place. It was up around Sebastian and Vero Beach uh, last I heard. It just seems to be sporadic in little pockets now. It's not the uh, the enormous mass it once was. It's just sort of spread around in little pockets. Well, that's and better. scientists are trying something. It looks like they're trying to blow it full of oxygen or something and kill it. I don't know what they're trying to do, but mm. um, haven't heard much of a report. I just somebody showed me a video of them shooting oxygen at it, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's that going to do? <laughs> go down the go down the pet store and get those aquarium pumps and stick them in the water. The air pump. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a big one, though. It was a big air pump. But uh, <laughs> it, hopefully it'll it'll all be gone soon. The weather temperature is going to change, you know, with these cooler stuff, and it'll die out eventually. But, yeah. you know, this has been a horrible year for it. And, uh, you know, elections coming up, guys, when you when you go to vote, forget what party they're with. Just check their uh, – See what their issues are with the water and how they stand on that and what their history is, not what they're saying now, because a lot of them want to be heroes now. Yeah. But what yeah. were they thinking two years ago? That's the Thank issue. You. Yeah. So. All right, Robert, I, I'm up against a break, my friend. Thank you so very much for calling in. I greatly appreciate it. It's Robert Warner. You, you guys have find, a great Sunday. You find him on the Florida uh, Fisherman Magazine, and you can also find him on Facebook. And we're up against a break, so please don't go away. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Roger's Got Your Motoring. If you need a local auto repair shop, Roger's Got Your Motoring will take care of all of your automotive repair needs. If you need something as simple as an oil change or as complex as an engine overhaul, I have the latest in technology and the knowledge to get the job done right. We've been servicing Pinellas County since 1994 and are conveniently located at 3700 Fifth Avenue North in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you need service, call now at 727-327-1830 or visit my website at www.rogersgotchamotoring.com or like my Facebook page at Rogers Gotcha Motoring for a complete list of all of our services. So come on over to Rogers, that's me, and get your car service today. And don't forget to shop and support local business. Call now to book your appointment at 727-327-1830. That's 727-327-1830. Or swing on by. K Pasa Mexican Cantina is where friends and neighbors come to connect, share, and celebrate one another in a festive, casual atmosphere. Offering rich, robust flavors of authentic Mexican cuisine, we use only the freshest, finest ingredients. We chop and dice, season and blend, and then cook everything we serve to perfection. One thing that makes Mexican food even better is one of our delicious Best of the Bay margaritas. Our signature series of margarita flavors range from our sweet and fruity mango and strawberry to our hot and juicy jalapeno margarita. Having a busy meeting, or getting together and looking for Mexican food? Try our Fast Facts form. It's an easy, fast way to order your favorite Mexican food. We have special platters and layouts for any occasion. The form is super easy to fill out. Fax, email, or just call it in. Whether it's here in the restaurant, in your home or office, at Que Pasa, we celebrate bringing people together. Que Pasa Mexican Cantina, 10478 Roosevelt Boulevard, North Street, in the Gateway Shopping Center, 727-330-3663 in St. Petersburg.
It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. Well, a good morning to you out there. If you're just joining us, it is a bright, beautiful, clear, crisp morning here on the East Coast, and the reports on the West Coast seem to be about the same. It is going to be a gorgeous day. Uh, I hear I hear a little echo in the background there, Captain Hook. Yeah, that's you. You have another guest on the line, and that's what you're hearing. Oh, okay, all right. So I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. So anyway, if you're just joining, you can always find our archives uh, as well as the show is replayed every day at 3 p.m. Uh, so if you missed today's uh, early morning show, you can always catch the replay at, at 3 p.m. Um, and there's many ways for uh, your friends and yourself to listen in. If you've got a, um, a smartphone, you can just go right on your smartphone, use the TuneIn app, use the free version. You don't have to have the uh, paid version. Use the free version, wdbf.fm. Uh, or you can go directly online to uh, wdbfradio.com. You can go online to uh, fishfloridashow.com and... Um, only while we are live, you can uh, go to the LNM network. <coughs> Excuse me, network.com. Uh, and for those of you who don't have the availability of uh, being able to get on the um, uh, the network uh, with your smartphone, or you may not be able to have uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Wireless where you're at. Um, you can always actually you can dial in uh, to the show only while we are live. You can dial in, and uh, that number is. Um, well, let's see. I had it, and I, now, I, now I've lost it. All right, I'll, I'll give you the number in a minute. Uh, so anyway, let me uh, welcome my co-host this morning, uh, Miss Pam Worth, one of the top female anglers in Florida. Good morning, Miss Pam. Good morning, sir. Nice and, and brisk and cool here today. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it, it's one of the few days that we you know look forward to here in Florida, where you wake up and walk out the door and it doesn't feel like a sauna, a sauna you know. Are you there? Yep. Sorry. Okay. Good. All right. That's all right. I think there's a little bit of a lag. And we have Captain Hook back there in the background. Thank you, Captain Hook. Um, I guess everything is working properly now? No. As a matter of fact, we're not But we're not able to take calls. So if any of our guests are calling in, uh, just be assured that I will call you right back and we'll get you on. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of technical issues, but that's the wonderful part of doing live radio. <laughs> and that's the, uh, that's the wonderful part of having somebody like Captain Hook in the background, just uh, kind of following up on everything. So I, I believe we have Carolyn uh, with Atlas Tracks on the line with us now. Are you there, Carolyn? I don't hear her, Captain Hook. Uh, I see her, but I don't hear her. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't hear her. Um, maybe try to call back? Yep. We're going to call you right back, Carolyn, okay? If you can hang up, we'll she, call you back. She sent me a text. I think I'm on, but I, I can't hear her. Let's try that again. Let's see if she's got her phone muted. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. So while we're waiting for Carolyn, I wanted to um, – I'm, I'm losing my track of, of thought here. I wanted to bring up the um, – some of the guests that we're going to have today, you know, we we spoke briefly about the water quality. Later on, uh, let's see, he's a couple of guests down. We're going to have Mitchell Roffer on. Mitchell is with Roffer's Ocean Fishing and Forecasting. He's also a marine biologist. He's going to, um, and I think he's on the East Coast. He'll verify that when he gets on. He's going to give us a little bit more of a breakdown. He's been experiencing personally firsthand uh, fish kills and red tide and um, may be able to get a little more information regarding the chemical makeup of this uh, from somebody who is experienced and, and is a marine biologist. So I'll be looking forward to having him on. We're going to have Captain Neil Holland on. Uh, Captain Neil is with Ocean A360. Um, are you familiar with Captain Neil, Pam? No, I'm not. So this is going to be really interesting. I look forward oh, okay. to the conversation. I I I think I got... You know, I don't remember. So many people tell me about people to bring on the show. I, it was either through um, Lisa, uh, Lisa Fitzgerald with CCA. I think that's who gave me his name. And so indirectly, you were <laughs> you're responsible for Yay. him coming on. Great. Because uh, you were the one who told me about uh, Lisa, Lisa uh -huh. with uh, CCA. I think it's CCA, right? Is mm -hmm. that what it's called? CCA. You're correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you're indirectly, <laughs> you're indirectly responsible <laughs> for that. And it, I, what I liked about that last time I had him on, I guess you were out fishing or something. He was explaining to us how they're, they're going to pay people to go out there and, and literally clean up the bay and, and, uh, pick up, uh, I think at the time they're either lobster traps or crab traps. You'll have to, he'll verify that. I think we have uh, Carolyn with us now. Carolyn, are you on the line with us? 
Yes, you do. Okay, there you go. All right, there she is. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Briscala and Captain Hook and Pam. How are you doing? Good morning. Doing great. Yeah, me not so well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Carolina, you know, I, I apologize. It's technical issues that we're having this morning. Uh, it's not that we were trying to hang up on you. It's that, that the issues are going on with the computers in the background. Um, but anyway, welcome and good morning. Thank you so much for calling in. Absolutely. I'm always happy to be here on a Sunday with you all. So let's talk a little bit about uh, fishing. How's the, Have you been fishing this last week, first of all? You know, I didn't make it out the last week, unfortunately. Um, you know, offer a couple offers, but uh, we're real, real busy with the with the tracking business last week, a lot of people take deliveries of their boats on a Friday. So uh, a lot of them, you know, need me to meet them halfway to the factories and make sure they have the equipment on board that they need to be able to get insurance. So unfortunately not. Well, I see that you, uh, you put a post up. When was the fishing that uh, you, this post that you put up where you had, a, you're holding a dolphin, it looks like. How long ago uh, was that? You know what? Yeah, was that, was, before, uh, that was, that was a blue water, that was a blue water babes tournament that was October 6th out of, um, out of Palm Beach that we had talked about before that was a benefit breast cancer. So that was a really good event. Um, there were about 400 lady anglers. Uh, it was still pretty rough. It was about six to seven foot seas. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a pretty good showing. Not that many fish, but, uh, a few of them made to the scales. Great event. Mm-hmm. I thought about you this last week as a post up on uh, the Facebook page, the, the Fish Florida Show on the Facebook page. Um, a man by the name of William Schmidt posted that not only did they get his boat, they got his boat and his his pickup truck both. Um, it uh, is. It's been a heavy day, a heavy week on theft. Uh, out of Delray Beach, there were three boats stolen. Um, mm. There was, and, and they're you know they're they're large boats, twenty eight to thirty three footers on trailers and people's yards. Um, they're heavy, heavy taking electronics right now. Uh, so that's why we're really trying to get our Atlas alarm out. Uh, so that way, if somebody jumps on a boat and takes off a piece of canvas to see what you have to steal, at least it sets off an audible alarm. But the, the rampant right thing right now is electronics and and uh, guard. You know, any of the the GPS tracking, uh, not tracking, but GPS navigational equipment. People are brave enough to jump on a boat and take your equipment in the middle of the day. Wow. So you know, something with a cable wrap or an alarm system, even if you just rest washing your boat you can just go inside if somebody pulls up to steal your equipment they set off the alarm you can run out and chase them off so mm-hmm. it's you know it's the smaller items that are getting stolen too that all have a, a value of, of having some kind of security system on them you can imagine i i think the story behind this one was that the the boat was hooked to the to the pickup truck uh and it's a mako it looks it appears to be at least a 24 foot mako maybe even bigger dual engines on the back this isn't a small boat, a dual axle trailer. Um, it's not something that somebody, it's not a smash and grab, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Somebody had the brass to take both of these, both yeah. the pickup and the boat, and take off with them. Um, so this isn't just limited to little things. You know, we, uh, we've talked many times about like the jet skis and stuff like that, because that, it, it, you know, let's face it, that's a, a lighter craft. That's something if somebody, two or three people get together, they could easily pick one up, throw it in the back of a pickup and take off somewhere. This is a big old boat that they took off with. This is how brazen these people are. Was it at this the- is not something they're going to go speeding down the road with. They're, they'll be driving maybe 30, 40 miles an hour pulling this thing. So this is how brazen these people are. And the longer they have it, the more damage you're going to do to it or the less – let me put it this way. The longer they have it, the less chances are you're going to get it back or you're going to get it back in the condition it was when they took it. Mm-mm. Right, and think about what's involved in taking a, a big pickup truck that's attached to a boat out of someone's driveway. I mean, I, yeah. I could barely get into a parking space in Publix, let alone pull out with, with speed, you know, uh, out of someone's driveway with the, with the, you know, people home. So it is, it's a big, it's a big deal. And you know, recovering these items as quickly as you can, whether it be a boat or a jet ski, or it's hunting season, you've got everyone going out and do deer hunting on ATVs. You know, those things are targets. For theft, these guys are out. You know, the guys and ladies are out hunting now, and you know, and just even for safety. So it's it's a big it's a big issue right now, and you know, it, it can save a lot of search and search and recovery time. Um, with uh, with we had a couple incidents. I think I told you a couple weeks ago where someone's EPIRB went off. Luckily, they had a tracker they could see they were moving. They weren't yeah. sedentary, and the Coast Guard didn't have to go rescue them. So the tracker, you know, just to, just for safety, security, uh, theft tracking, worst case. Is just something that everyone could, should consider on on anything, and we even have them on hot air balloons, believe it or not. Oh. 
I know Pam has, was trying to say something. Go ahead, Pam. No, I'm just amazed that they got, I was going to ask where the, the boat and the truck were, and you mentioned it was in somebody's own driveway. It's just, oh. to me, amazing oh, yeah. that, 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 that happened and nobody noticed. Yeah, yeah and they're it, taking them out of RV yards, security RV yards. They'll cut down the, the chain link fence, drive through the fence, grab them and go. So, wow. so you're not even safe in a locked 24 hour security facility. And, and there were about four or five boats in the last two weeks stolen from security, um, storage facilities. Jeez. And, and even RVs, things like that. Large, large things that are, you know, you can't miss them. And, yeah. you know, even last year in Colorado, someone stole a snow groomer that was, that was painted oh like goodness. the General Lee from Dukes of Hazard. And it went all the way across the, the, the Colorado before they found it. So, you know, and that's bright orange. So, you know, there, people are taking crazy large stuff. Even you, you even hear every once in a while aircraft theft. Someone yeah. Yeah. will roll into an airport, jump in a plane and, and go. Yeah. The, the little Cessnas, I, I heard about one a couple of months or so ago. A little Cessna because we have a small airport right, not very far from me. And I have some friends that, that go out there occasionally to have a, an aircraft. Somebody stole a little Cessna. They didn't lock it down and they took off with it. Now you got to, this isn't something you put in the back of a car and drive off with. It's something you have to get on the runway and take off with. So the point I'm trying to make is there are very brazen people out there. It's a sad reality, but it is the reality that we live in. We work hard for what we have. I think that we should do the best that we can to protect it in whatever way we can. And this is just no, one absolutely, way. Absolutely. Yep. And, and I mentioned to you, Rascala, that we actually do general aviation aircraft now. And we have a gentleman, an older gentleman, who has a helicopter who flies around Michigan. And, and thank goodness he had one of our trackers because – he had a, 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 a below a thousand feet. He had a, a, unfortunately crashed his helicopter into, into his yard and mm-hmm. was all right. Went to the hospital, but you know they were able to at least see. Okay, why? You know, where's dad? Why is the altitude down? Versus if you're under a thousand feet with the with the air traffic controllers, they can't see you. So yeah. this is a really good reason. We have a, a bunch of people now that have them on their private aircraft. Uh, we're looking at doing some float plane projects with some cargo companies that head to the Bahamas. Uh, that way they can know when their pilots are close to the islands or if they're having issues or notify guests when they have their parts coming for their boat repairs and things like that. So, um, you know, we're really getting into all, all, any kind of avenue that we can for safety and, you know, uh, to just make sure people are getting where they're supposed to get. Technology is so amazing. <laughs> it's just amazing. I think you told me that uh, with the GPS tracking, you correct me if I'm, not, if I'm wrong, but I think you said like within 10 feet anywhere on the planet? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. The trackers work worldwide with the satellites that are up in the orbit. Um, you know, in ours, basically, when something moves 300 feet, it wakes the tracker up, tracks every 10 minutes while it's moving, and when it stops for five minutes, it goes back to rest, meaning that's the last location. So if somebody steals something, you'll, you'll know the entire route where they're going, if it's a highway or if it's waterways, and then when it stops, uh, you'll catch it en route. But if it does stop at a boat ramp, waiting for a truck to pull it out, you'll be able to notify the, the with a view of a map latitude, longitude, um, and make a lap, uh, map link for law enforcement or family members if they need that for, uh, you know, locating someone. Even charter vessels are using us to monitor all of their boats on one map. They can see where all their boats are or all their snowmobiles at one time. Wow. So it's really a effective tool for production and also fleet management. And I, like amazing. I said, technology is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Just amazing. Well, I, you know, if we can help anybody, always look for us at, you know, atlastracks.com or dial me anytime, 24-7 at my phone number, 954-465-3743. I'm always, always available to uh, people that need help. And, and Atlas Tracks is A-T-L-A-S-T-R-A-X, correct? That's correct. Yes, Atlastracks.com. It's Carolyn. And again, slowly this time, uh, your phone number? 954-465-3743. I think it's peace of mind. I, I, you, I really, you can't put a price on peace of mind. This is why I have Carolyn on uh, so many times because I, I am somebody who is passionate about doing what I can to, to help society in general. If people realize that they just can't get away with this stuff, then maybe they'll stop doing it. Uh, I know that may be a fantasy to some people, but really that's what it boils down to. They're doing it because they can get away with it. If they can't get away with it, maybe we could – put a hinder in some of these people's uh, thoughts and, and processes. Thank you, Carolyn. Greatly appreciate it. Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. Ladies and gentlemen, up against a break, and uh, it won't be long. We will be right back. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. 
We'll be right back. Download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip. You can find your tide reports, buoy reports, get a fishing license, and even find someone to go fishing with. Plus great products and services from all our media partners. And oh yeah, you can get the Fish Florida show on the app. Sundays at 8 a.m. Eastern here on the WDBF radio networks. So download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip and tune in. Battles aren't won solely on the field. That's a common misconception. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. Promises to oneself. This is a physical training event. Promises to one's community. Healthy people move debris out of their house. Promises to one's country. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise forever kept. A promise of battles won. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. Not work. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. It took me a long time to be able to say Chandler has cancer because that is such a scary word. St. Jude takes care of absolutely everything. And knowing that we don't have to pay for all of the medical expenses, that's huge. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. St. Jude is uniquely positioned to advance the cures of pediatric cancer, I think better than any other institution in the world. The contributions make a big difference. Donors are important to us because you get the feeling that you have a team behind you. We have the resources and we have the focus. And so if St. Jude doesn't do it, who will? St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. My vehicle was sent six feet in the air in a ball of fire. I thought I was going to die. It uh, ripped my arm off. It broke my right femur. I took such a hard blow to the head that my retina was torn apart. Say a prayer for peace. I'm Trace Adkins. I want to tell you about these true American heroes and how you can show your thanks by helping them through Wounded Warrior Project. They reached out to us as a family, and they never forgot about us. The job of helping thousands of our wounded warriors rebuild their lives is massive and growing every day. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Many of these service members suffer traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. They helped me basically put my life back together. If it wasn't for Wounded Warrior Project, I would be a statistic right now. I would have been one of those soldiers who came home and committed suicide. I'm in the fields of Vietnam, the mountains of Afghanistan. Your gift today of $19 a month can help us provide the programs and services desperately needed by our wounded service members. Call or go online with a pledge and you'll receive this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. Make that call now. Say a prayer for peace.
It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Riscola Stevens. Uh, good morning to you out there. If you're just joining us, uh, and you're not in South Florida, um, <laughs> I have a friend of mine who lives in Wisconsin. They're expecting snow. Um, if you're not in South Florida, you are missing out on some really phenomenal weather. It's one of the few days that we get here in South Florida that uh, we so eagerly await. You walk out the front door and you don't feel like you're walking into a sauna. Nice, crisp, cool air. Um, seas are relatively light, uh, two to four feet. Um, not too bad. Uh, if you're in a small craft, you don't want to go out. But, you know, we've got a bigger boat. You might want to go out and do some fishing while you can. I hear there's going sure to be is, some Hello. heavy... Heavy uh, uh, weather going on tomorrow. Uh, so anyway, this morning I have Pam Worth with me. She is the one of the top female I'm, I'm kayak anglers in Florida. Good morning, Miss Pam. Not right now. Okay, stand by when I take. When I take Are you there, Miss Pam? We are okay. having technical issues. Believe me. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> sorry. Uh, there she is. Yeah, uh, sorry, we were off for a second here. Yeah, and uh, we have Captain Hook working feverishly in the background, trying to overcome technical issues that we've been yeah, having. Yeah, I, I, I want to see if we have Captain Neal on the other line. Captain Neal, are you there? I'm here, Captain Hook, and I can hear Ruskala as well. All right. We're, All right. We're, we're, Great. We kind of jerry-rigged something together here, and we got it going. So, our Captain Neil, good morning. We are having all kinds of technical issues, but it is always uh, a pleasure to have you on. One of the reasons I like having you on is what you guys do, and that is uh, help clean up the waterways. So, if you would, uh, Captain Neil, give us a little bit of an update on what's going on. Glad to. Well, Rascala, last time you had me on the show, you'll remember I was talking about Ocean Aid 360's grant that we received from the right. NOAA Marine right. Debris Program and the Ghost Trap Rodeo event series, which was going to clean up abandoned crab traps and uh, marine debris through six semi-competitive tournaments to be held all around Tampa Bay, one per month between the end of October and the end of March. And would you believe yesterday we had our first, uh, our kickoff event uh, and, and tournament. Uh, it was a four-hour search, and we had about 11 teams turn out. And I'm so glad to say that we, we captured about 26 abandoned crab traps out of the environment around Fort DeSoto um, and about 400 pounds of debris um, wow. that was uh, floating around the area there. So uh, it was it, the, the result exceeded my expectations and a, a really wonderful time was had by all. So this is the first one, right? Yeah, very first one of six. Uh, the next one is going to be November 24th. We're going to be at, uh, focusing on the Manatee River and the River Mouth. Um, and I think we're going to be leaving out of the Bradenton Yacht Club, but um, we're trying to finalize the location right now. We're going to be posting it up here real soon. If somebody wants to get involved in this, how, how do they do that, Captain Neal? That's easy. Uh, simply uh, go in your, on your computer to or your telephone to Ocean AID. 360 ocean aid 360.org and right there on the on the landing page when you enter the website you'll see the the ghost trap rodeo logo you click on it and it takes you right to the registration page and some information about the uh about the event series and also uh lets you know that the prizes that that are offered at each one of these tournaments somebody is coming home with a power a new power pole nice uh with uh, We've got four uh, big angle coolers that are donated for each event. We've got three pairs of Costa sunglasses. Uh, we give out a voucher that's valued at $259 for the voucher, so you can get pretty much any pair of Costa sunglasses you'd like to if you win that prize. Wow. Uh, five, five TFO and Shimano combos, uh, plus fishing charters, artwork, and, uh, and West Marine has partnered with us to give us some different prizes at each event as well. That's I know you got a question, Pam. Go ahead. No, I think I think that's great. Now, when people get out there, I know that Tampa Bay does shut down one day a year and pick up all the and ask all the uh, crabbers to pull their traps, and then they pick mm -hmm. up anything that's left over. How do people know if it's an abandoned trap or if if it's actually a legal trap out there? Pam, that's such a great question. Um, and you know, the way that the, the regulations are written up are quite confusing for groups that are trying to do retrievals like we are. 
So we have to spend a lot of time with our uh, volunteers, kind of educating them about the process and, and making sure that we have some hard and fast rules that are clear to everyone. Basically, um, if a trap is missing one of its six sides, um, or, or it's been compromised somehow, maybe a boat has crushed it or, um, you know, over, over the course of time of being in the environment, one of the panels has degraded. Um, that constitutes a derelict trap and it can be retrieved. Um, otherwise, if it's missing its buoy and its line and it doesn't have a commercial tag on it, a trap like that can be retrieved as well. Basically, there are about six different characteristics that the FWC gives us. Um, and if it's missing any three of those six characteristics, then it can be retrieved. Um, so our volunteers, you know, uh, God bless them. They have to go out there with the, with the kind of litmus test and review each trap that they think has been abandoned. You know, we all go around the watershed and we see a trap that we say, oh, goodness, that thing looks like it's been sitting there forever. Well, you have to break out your, uh, your little litmus test in front of you and kind of um, assess it. And if it matches three of those characteristics, then it's allowed to be pulled. That's great. Now, how about private people that have their own, you know, pinfish traps or something like that? Uh, mm-hmm. There's no tags or anything on it. I think basically they have a buoy and that's it. That's right. That's right. Well, for the purposes of our project, we're not focused on pinfish traps or uh, smaller traps like that would be. Um, I know that some pinfish traps can be quite large, but what we're really focused on are uh, blue crab and stone crab uh, traps. And um, we're not pulling anything else out um, other that is kind of like a trap uh, fishing mechanism. We're just pulling out other types of debris. Like uh, yesterday we found aluminum siding. Oh, we found the whole great. front of someone's dock. We found the whole front of someone's dock that uh, must have broken away in the last storm. Um, floating in the, in the, in right down there near the Meisner Bridge. Um, yeah. So anyway, and you know, I just want to mention to you, you, you said that the trap fishery is closed for one day a year. That's, that's close, but it's not quite right. The way that they do it is that each, uh, every other year, uh, um. the, our, our counties, like our stretch of the Florida coastline is closed and it's closed for 10 days. Um, so any trap which remains in the fishery uh, for the 10-day period between uh, July 20th and 30th, I believe it is, uh, of July 2019, they can be pulled. Okay. But it's uh, every other year, and it's for 10 days. Okay. Good to yeah. know. You know, this is um, yeah. one of my passions is to create something where both parties win. This is like the CCA thing. Oh. Uh, Captain Neal, are you related somehow to CCA? I don't remember how I found out about you. No, no. Um, Do you well, work with them I, I or something? I say that our project is related. Our project is related, and I'm a member of CCA. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when we came up with the idea, our small group of folks that I know here around the St. Petersburg area that were passionate about this and wanted to do something, um, we sat down and kind of started uh, coming up with some concepts. And then early on, very early on in that process, we reached out to CCA. And they said, hey, we'll, we'll partner with you all if you want to do this. And, uh, and we can work together to submit a proposal over to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for some grant support to be able to afford the prizes and refreshments and uh, the basic supplies like we need, like an event tent and some tables and that kind of thing. Uh, to be able to carry out this, uh, this event series. And so lo and behold, we, we worked together on the proposal and submitted it with a letter of support from Congressman Charlie Chris and from, uh, the, the trap retrieval coordinator at FWC in Tallahassee, Ms. Pamela Groover. And, uh, Noah reviewed our proposal against a lot of other proposals that they, that they get each year and, uh, decided to award us a grant fund to afford the project. Well, congratulations. Um, the reason why I brought CCA up in, in the subject matter is they have a yeah. – um, um, I can't think of the right word right now. Tournament. They have a, sec- a – well, they have a tournament, but part of the tournament, they have a, a category in the tournament that is mm-hmm. a trash category. You go out and you pick up trash, and they put you in like a lottery to see – you know, you might win something. But yeah. the point being is that yeah. you, like them – provide something that mm-hmm. helps clean up the waterways. You know, they're the only fishing tournament I've ever heard of that has a category like that ever. And then you're the only people yeah. I've ever heard of that go out literally and pick up trash. <laughs> Made out, a whole out tournament of out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so everybody yeah, wins. 
you know, this is something that I full heartedly support where everybody wins. We're going to get, we're going to have cleaner water. Somebody's going to win a prize. You can enjoy yourself while you're out there. If it's a family outing, uh, again, it's the building relationships of the family, which anybody who's listening to me knows how important to me that is. It's a passion of mine to, to build families and build relationships, lifelong experiences, all sharing them at the same time, cleaning up the waterway and having an opportunity to make some, uh, to, to win a prize. <laughs> you know, that's, I don't know. To me, that's great. Yeah, you're exactly right, Rascala. I mean, what we're trying to do here is get people to think just a little bit differently and to employ those same sight fishing techniques that you'd use looking for uh, a big snook along the swash channel just inside Bunce's Pass or a redfish up in the flats. We want them to use those same kinds of techniques to to look for abandoned traps and, and debris and then um, understand the protocols for pulling it out safely and in accordance with the law, you know. So, I mean, it's it's really a wonderful thing to to be able to um, contribute to this, and I, I'm just so excited about it. You know, I mean, somebody went home yesterday. Our, our winning team they went home with a power pole, a 65 wow. quart angle cooler, a beautiful rod and reel combo from TFO and Shimano. I mean, they they were happy as clams. I think everybody looked around and said, <laughs> you know, every, everybody just kind of looked around at each other and said, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. These industry sponsors have really, like, you know, that pledged their support and they're taking this seriously and, and they're rewarding us, you know, for this effort. So I think wow. it, it was such a uh, wonderful experience. And I think that everybody that was involved and touched by the, by the project is going to um, go forward with kind of fresh eyes on this topic, you know. Oh, I know it took a lot of work to put that together and man, my hat's off to you. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. Damn, thank you so much. It, it, yeah, it does. It takes a lot of work, but it's well worth it. I mean, you get to go to bed at night and, and feel wonderful about <laughs> your day, you know? So I, I don't, uh, I don't have any qualms with it. I'm glad to do it. You know, I, I know for me, if I were to be involved in this, I'm, I'm on the other side of the state, but if I were involved in this and I went out and I picked up whatever I picked up and I came back. And even if I didn't win anything or get anything, I'd have the knowledge of knowing I did whatever small part it was to help clean up yep. the water for everybody. So it's a win-win yep. no matter what. That's right. That's right. And there there are a lot of people out there. As I talk to people around my community about what we're doing, they say, oh, my goodness, you know, every time we go to the beach, we pick up five pieces of trash, you know, and that kind of thing. And I, I love hearing that. I, I think that these – these concepts are not completely foreign to people, and I think that they want to do something about it. Um, you know, this project that we're doing, it just gives everybody a chance to come together as a group and, and make a, a real kind of a monumental impact on, on one day, you know, and for six events over the course of a year. Um, so it's really a nice thing in that regard. But I think these concepts are growing on people, and I think that we're starting to see some more um, conscientiousness around the environment and keeping things clean. So it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm feeling great about it. You should. And, you know, people who do things like you do and the CCA, that is mm-hmm. just brings it to attention, brings it out in the spotlight so people are more aware of it. Because a lot of us, you know, I, I don't want to speak for other people. I know me personally. I used to be on what I call autopilot. Mm-hmm. You, you go down, you do your thing, you come back. You're not really considering other things like maybe picking up trash or, or, or seeing something and just walking by it, not doing anything. And, and that, that whole mentality is slowly changing uh, with people like you and, like I mentioned earlier, CCA, who brings it to the spotlight so that it is an awareness. It's some people being more mindful of our environment because it's just, you know, I'm a firm believer. Let's leave it better than it was when we came. Yeah. And, uh, we, exactly. my generation exactly. hasn't done a very good job of that. So I'm pushing more and more for that. Uh, well, Ruth Collar, rest assured, we're going to stay on it, buddy. We're going to be uh, continuing to work on this and, and trying to get the word out around our community and, and, um, build support. You know, we really want to see this thing um, grow and, and people really kind of bring this into their lives as something that they, that they see as important. And when they're on the water, they, they take some time to pick things up out there, you know? So That's yeah, great. I'm with you. That's yeah. great. Well, I want to thank you. First of all, I want to congratulate you for being able to get this grant. Cause I know grants from my own personal experience many years ago, it's a very competitive field. So congratulations. On that. Congratulations on the work that you're doing and helping cleaning up the water. Thank you for that. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you for being on the show with us. I'll have you back on to give us another update as well. Okay. That sounds great. And, and I sure appreciate the support. You've been an early supporter of us since be- well before our first event. And, uh, 
and just so glad to um, to have a chance to get the word out to your listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Captain Neil. God bless you. We're up against a break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Bye-bye. Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Roger's Got Your Motoring. If you need a local auto repair shop, Roger's Got Your Motoring will take care of all of your automotive repair needs. If you need something as simple as an oil change or as complex as an engine overhaul, I have the latest in technology and the knowledge to get the job done right. We've been servicing Pinellas County since 1994 and are conveniently located at 3700 Fifth Avenue North in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you need service, call now at 727-327-1830 or visit my website at www.rogersgotchamotoring.com or like my Facebook page at Rogers Got Your Motoring for a complete list of all of our services. So come on over to Rogers, that's me, and get your car service today. And don't forget to shop and support local business. Call now to book your appointment at 727-327-1830. That's 727-327-1830. Or swing on by. K Pasa Mexican Cantina is where friends and neighbors come to connect, share, and celebrate one another in a festive, casual atmosphere. Offering rich, robust flavors of authentic Mexican cuisine, we use only the freshest, finest ingredients. We chop and dice, season and blend, and then cook everything we serve to perfection. One thing that makes Mexican food even better is one of our delicious Best of the Bay margaritas. Our signature series of margarita flavors range from our sweet and fruity mango and strawberry to our hot and juicy jalapeno margarita. Having a busy meeting, or getting together and looking for Mexican food? Try our Fast Facts form. It's an easy, fast way to order your favorite Mexican food. We have special platters and layouts for any occasion. The form is super easy to fill out. Fax, email, or just call it in. Whether it's here in the restaurant, in your home or office, at k Pasa, we celebrate bringing people together. k Pasa Mexican Cantina, 10478 Roosevelt Boulevard, North Street, in the Gateway Shopping Center, 727-330-3663 in St. Petersburg. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Hey, this is Captain Hook for Statewide Pest Control Services. They've been serving the west coast of Florida since 1987. Statewide does it all. Pest control, termites, lawns, mosquitoes, tent fumigations, etc. This announcement is from their mold division. Since Hurricane Charlie in 2004, all their personnel are certified in mold and moisture control. Their two-step services are guaranteed to get you back in your home quicker and, in most cases, paid by your insurance company. Give them a call at 877-488-7378. That's Statewide Pest Control Services for all your pest and mold control needs. Serving Florida from Pasco to Lee Counties. Statewide Pest Control Services, 877-488-7378. 877-488-7378. That's 877-488-7378. You're listening to WDBFRadio.com, a tune-in station. WDBFRadio.com All right, grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I'm fishing till dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing in Florida. When the sun shines all day. Call me a group of fishing in Florida. Oh yeah. Fishing in 
It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Riscola Stevens. Well, a very good morning to you in the top of the hour. It has been a real beautiful morning here in South Florida on the East Coast. And uh, my reports on the West Coast uh, tell me about the same. Good morning, Miss Pam and Captain Hook back there in the background. Good morning, and, uh, sir. I hear that it's beautiful on your end as well. It is. A little breezy, but uh, the sky is beautiful. Was I actually had put a jacket on, but I'm a wimp. Anything under <laughs> 70, my jacket's on. I had a jacket on going out this morning. I took the dog out this morning and... Uh, Took a, uh, a step out the front door without looking, you know, uh, at the at the weather, just thinking it was going to be another one of those where you walk out and you feel like you're in a sauna kind of thing. And took a step out, and went, "Whoa, no, 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 back up." <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Not for a Florida boy, I'll tell you what. So went back in and got me a jacket. Went out very, very comfortable in the jacket. Yeah. Um, seas are not too bad. About uh, ten mile an hour winds right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Seas expected to be two to four feet on this side. I think it's about the same on your side as well. Yep, I'm um, staying in the bay. Yeah, and you, so you plan on doing fishing in a little while so yep, after the I'm, show? Yeah, I'm headed out. I'm going to fish kind of north side, so the wind's coming out of the north. It'll protect the kayak. But, mm-hmm. hey, I wanted to bring something up. We had talked sure. a little bit earlier about the Panhandle and Hurricane Michael. Uh, mm-hmm. Tampa Fishing Outfitters with some of the top brands here in the Tampa Bay area, Humpback, humpback Nets, uh, Bull Bay Rods, fishing, uh, 13 Fishing, and Skinny Water Culture, which is a real big in this area, are putting together kind of a social at Tampa Fishing Outfitters on the 7th of November, and it's a fundraiser. It'll be in the evening. It's a fundraiser uh, for hurricane relief. There'll be barbecue, beer, and uh, some of our top captains in the area will be there to answer any of your questions. But it's going to be a social, basically. Get together, have some fun, tell some fish stories. So, again, the date is what? November 7th. Okay, so that's uh, next week. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, It's it's a week from this Wednesday. That is correct, sir. So it's a week from... Week from Wednesday and, and where? Six to nine at Tampa Fishing uh, uh, Outfitters in Tampa off Osborne. Great. So if you want to get involved in that, and it's free to yep. the public? It's wow. free. It's free. There'll be a lot of prizes, some games. There'll be uh, net, cast net throwing. We've got, uh, you're going to laugh at this name, but Steve Bo- Boogie, who's one of the top bass captains. He's going to be doing a little, you know, pitching Mm-hmm. With the rod, we're going to have fly casting out there. We'll probably have, we have one of the top fly captains in the area, uh, Captain Dustin Pack, who's going to be there and talk about flies and, uh, maybe even a little fly casting, uh, contest. So it should wow. be a lot of fun. I've, I've never, uh, really done fly casting. I, I, I've seen many videos of it and, and think that I could do it, but I think it's a lot harder than it looks. Uh, it's one of those things where you know you're looking at a professional when they make it look easy. Yeah. And uh, those, that's what I see on, on, on uh, the videos that I watch. It, these people make it look like it's really easy. Now, I, I think you went fly fishing for tarpon one time or something like that, right? Or, or was it sailfish? Um, I have tried, and the word is tried, to fly fish. And remember my nickname, I Love Lucy. Um, no, no. And especially I, I fish out of a kayak with all that line when you strip. I mean, there's people that do it out of a kayak and they're amazing. I am just not talented enough. <laughs> I can bird nest most of the uh, cast, uh, cast bait caster. So I'm happy to stay with all my spinning gear. <laughs> So, but I, I am right. right? You you did attempt it, was it, but I don't remember. Was it uh, tarpon? Or was it tarpon. sailfish? No, it's tarpon. 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 I have a friend that does though. Uh, chum up the water and th- wait for sails to come near, and then does uh, fly fishing for sailfish. Wow. Well, you know, I, I've mentioned this many times on the show, but it is it is impressive. If you go on the Facebook page, you'll see. Uh, a picture of Miss Pam holding uh, a little guppy, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> very impressive, very impressive. So she's uh, she's had her share of some rather large fish, um, and that one I'd say was easily three quarters the length of the kayak. What is it, a thirteen foot kayak? That yeah, you're in? thirteen and a half is my native. 
Yeah. That was a that was a big fish. That was. It was. That that was one of my first sales and uh, it was so funny. I'm so gullible. You know I am. <laughs> and the help boat that had the photographer on it was yelling and I said I have a tag, you know, I, I tag I I touched the leader. I have a catch. And they're going like bring it in and grab its nose. I'm like, are you kidding me? And it's <laughs> you, you, the sword. You see how low I am to the water. This yeah, sword is yeah. just slinging all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. That was so funny. I got it. Well, <laughs> well it, it, is, it is an impressive picture, I must say. Um, so typically when you're out in the kayak, how, how many hours do you spend out there? Uh, it depends. I, and, and if it's just like today, it's going to be a half a day. But usually uh, I'm on the water at first light or just before first light because I like to get out before the boats are out there. And, uh, I'll, I'll fish until we can't fish anymore. I've been known to get out before six and not get back in in the summer until after seven. Oh my goodness. Wow. So, and how do you, do you do anything for sun protection while you're out there? Absolutely. Thank you. What a good topic to bring up. Uh, they laugh at me, but I wear this big old floppy hat, you know, that you may have seen your grandfather in. Um, <laughs> fish monkey gloves, which are awesome. They're, uh, and then I always wear a long performance shirt and, uh, I like the Sims fishing pants and, uh, I'll, I'll throw on, this is the other thing they laugh at. I'll throw, I use my husband's, uh, don't tell him this. I use my husband's white socks, you know, the old big gym socks, uh-huh. especially uh-huh. in the summer to put those on and protect your feet from the sun. Oh yeah. And then, wow. and yeah, and I'm still, I, I put Neutrogena sunblock all over my face oh yeah well i i I was curious about that because you are a light-skinned person Mm -hmm. and one of my daughters is very light-skinned and she's got to be very careful i mean a half an hour for her out there it it should look like a lobster when she comes in yep um so i I was curious so that when you're wearing these like long sleeve stuff it's it's uh is it that material i can't think of the name of it. it's a breathable material yeah it's high performance and it's it's uh it's also has built in um sun protection for you yet it breathes and there's some like gills that actually have uh a little bit of webbing on the side that really helps bleed, breathe, and they wick away. Anytime you start to perspire, uh, yeah. the material is made to wick away, and when it gets wet and then wicks to dry, that's kind of like... feels cool. Exactly. Right? Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. That, the big hat, again, the bigger the hat, almost the better, because the big hat, I'm sitting in shade. My face and shoulders are in shade almost the whole time that I am fishing. Good point. I know that we, you know, many of us enjoy being out there. For me, uh, many years ago when I was out, I, I wore a sunscreen, uh, but what didn't have the wherewithal <laughs> to wear a hat. Uh, so many, I would come back with this tan that would be all around my eyes. You could see the, <laughs> you know, the, around my eyes is white, but everything else is tan. Yep. Uh, people would laugh at me. Uh, I would come back looking like that quite often. They'd know that I'd been out for the week. I'd spend the whole weekend when I could. I was a firm believer. If you're going to have a boat, you better use it. Otherwise, it's going to rot. So yep. every opportunity I had, I went out there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard every now and then, uh, one of the guys will come in from, uh, you know, into the shop and with, with that same raccoon looking, the reverse raccoon. (laughs) And it's like, boy, don't, don't tell your boss you're sick and come in looking like that the next day. (laughs) (laughs) Or come in looking like that. And then the next day after, you know, you make it on a Monday, but then you call in on Tuesday because you're so burnt up. You just can't take it anymore. Yeah. Well, I've had those days. Going into the winter, uh, heat isn't quite as bad a problem as it is in the summer, but uh, drink a lot of liquids. If you start to feel thirsty, it's almost too late. Too late, yeah. Keep the liquids in you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and 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 the uh by the time you feel thirsty, you're absolutely right. It's just too late. You've got to do it before you feel that that coming on because uh it can get uh, some people get really bad headaches. Some people actually they pass out yep. briefly from from that kind of thing. Um but even if it's cool outside, I mean, I found out on days where uh those few days that we have that it's cool outside, you still get burnt. Mm-hmm. You still get burnt, especially on a clear day. Oh my goodness. Yep. You're right. You're right. So, and so just because it's cool outside doesn't mean you're not going to get burned. I, I, some people have this idea and the impression in their mind, well, if it's cool outside, it's going to be a little better. I can stay longer. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. No, when I came across today, uh, we had, what do they call it, a jaybird 
blue skies. So there was no clouds at all, which means that mm. sun's down on you the whole time. It's wow. Yeah, it, it's kind of deceptive. No, no hiding. Right. <laughs> exactly. Won't be any hiding from that. So when's your next adventure out into the water? Uh, well, you know, I was actually I was planning on going this afternoon, but I've I've like Captain Hook, I've experienced some technical problems with my computer over the weekend. It downloaded a uh, an update and it has messed up certain parts of my computer, so I'm going to probably end up working on this computer because I won't have time to do it as the week goes on here, unfortunately. But uh, it seems like uh, when when they when it pours it when it rains it pours kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, did did an update and you know now I've got to deal with this nonsense. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Anyway, I, I, you know my next guest was supposed to be Mitchell. And I, he may be having a problem with his phone and he hasn't called in. Mitchell is a um, he's a uh, marine biologist, and I wanted to get his take on what was going on because he has been posting that the uh, red tide. He's up north of me. Um, I can't remember exactly where, but he's he's. A little ways up north. I mean, I think in Melbourne. Is Melbourne on my yeah. side? Yeah, I think I think he's in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. He was reporting that, uh, you know, they were seeing a lot of dead fish, not just all kinds of fish. And uh, it didn't seem to be getting any better up there. That's why I wanted to hear from him. I, I guess, again, I can only guess that he's having an issue with his phone because I'd asked him to call in. So hopefully we'll be able to, uh, we'll hear from him later. Yeah, Captain um, Cook's going to try to give him a call now. But, uh, yeah, a couple of my friends that are over there in the Cape Canaveral area, especially Natalie, she did some posting showing... Uh, Dead fish and mullet, mullet that were gasping. Now <sighs> mullet do come to the air, to the surface. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They were sitting in and dying in front of her. Oh, uh, so, that yeah. is so sad. So I, I, I just don't under. I, that's something I've never understood about us. Um, it, it just never made sense to me how we do that, and and we do it and look the other way, and <laughs> and it's common sense, you know. It's just you just don't. Some of these things that we do, especially this, the drainage of this lake. And the more that I look into it, the more I find, oh my goodness, you know, they're, they're doing things that I thought would never be approved here in Florida, but they're doing them. They're, yeah. you know, yeah, doing it, them. And, it's sad, but you know, the red tide is a whole different animal. You know, it has this nothing is to from, do with that, with the, or in my opinion, it really has little to do with that's the That's why I wanted, yeah, that's why I wanted Mitchell on because Mitchell could, you know, being a, a marine biologist, he, he could explain it. And, and the last time he was on, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was saying this is kind of sort of like, and I, and I again, I hope he comes on. He can he can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was kind of sort of like vitamins for the um, for this algae. Right. Uh, it it supported it. It made it bloom more. It, you know, and to the point where it just made it crazy, like steroids kind of. I, crazy. D- I did not get through to him, but I, I did leave a message for him. So. Okay. Well, we got a break coming up at nine twenty. Maybe I can get him on in that slot. I don't. Again, he may be having a problem with his phone. So, because uh, he's usually good about calling in. So I was hoping to have him on and get a uh, marine biologist's point of view about what's happening with the water. And and I, I think uh, Melbourne is about fifty miles or so, roughly north of me, where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot around me, and I meant to ask Robert. Because he's he's just slightly north of me. Uh, if he's seeing it in the river itself, yeah. Because uh, I think that's one of the estuaries that they drain through, right? Yeah, Dee Kaminsky. She's a kayak guide over on your coast, up around the Banana River, and she said she couldn't even get out of. They live on the river. She couldn't mm-hmm. even get out of the house without wearing a mask, and it affected oh, her that badly. How sad. Yeah. I know. What is it going to take for people to say, you know, enough of this? This is. This is insanity, you know, truly. I don't, I don't like to get on the subject because it's negative, but it's reality. You know, we can't keep looking the other way. People can't even walk out of their house without a mask on. People can't go to the beach without a mask on. Uh, some of these places have flesh-eating bacteria in the water. They yeah. don't, you know, a lot of the places aren't saying that because they're worried about tourism. Well, I'm hoping. That's the reality. I'm hoping with the hurricane and the colder weather and this front that's coming through next weekend also, that it's going to really turn things around. I do know that uh, the fishing has picked up, so that's good, at least in the Tampa Bay area. So. Yeah. Wow. Kingfish. All right. Well, I think we're just a couple of seconds away from taking the next break, so we'll just go ahead and take it a couple of seconds early. And uh, don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Fish Florida Show. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip. 
You can find your tide reports, buoy reports, get a fishing license, and even find someone to go fishing with, plus great products and services from all our media partners. And, oh, yeah, you can get the Fish Florida Show on the app, Sundays at 8 a.m. Eastern, here on the WDBF Radio Networks. So download the Fish Florida mobile app to plan your boating, fishing, or hunting trip, and tune in. Battles aren't won solely on the field. That's a common misconception. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. Promises to oneself. This is a physical training event. Promises to one's community. Healthy people move to free out of their house. Promises to one's country. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise forever kept. A promise of battles won. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. Not wor- I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. Ha, 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 ha. Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out, look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. It took me a long time to be able to say Chandler has cancer because that is such a scary word. St. Jude takes care of absolutely everything. And knowing that we don't have to pay for all of the medical expenses, that's huge. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. St. Jude is uniquely positioned to advance the cures of pediatric cancer, I think better than any other institution in the world. The contributions make a big difference. Donors are important to us because you get the feeling that you have a team behind you. We have the resources and we have the focus. And so if St. Jude doesn't do it, who will? St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. My vehicle was sent six feet in the air in a ball of fire. I thought I was going to die. It uh, ripped my arm off. It broke my right femur. I took such a hard blow to the head that my retina was torn apart. Say a prayer for peace. I'm Trace Atkins. I want to tell you about these true American heroes and how you can show your thanks by helping them through Wounded Warrior Project. They reached out to us as a family and they never forgot about us. The job of helping thousands of our wounded warriors rebuild their lives is massive and growing every day. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Many of these service members suffer traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. They helped me basically put my life back together. If it wasn't for Wounded Warrior Project, I would be a statistic right now. I would have been one of those soldiers who came home and committed suicide. I'm in the fields of Vietnam, the mountains of Afghanistan. Your gift today of $19 a month can help us provide the programs and services desperately needed by our wounded service members. Call or go online with a pledge and you'll receive this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. Make that call now. Say a prayer for peace.
It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Riscola Stevens. Well, a good morning to you out there. If you're just tuning in, it is the Fish Florida Show. And uh, if you've missed part of the show, you're just tuning in. You can always listen to the archives. You can always listen to the replay. We do replay the show at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And uh, we do, uh, those of you who can't sleep at night, <laughs> we'll play it again at 4 a.m. If you miss both of those, we always have the archives available. The archives are found on the fishfloridashow.com, also on the YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel with Fish Florida Show. Um, let's see, where else can you find? You can find us on Facebook. If you can go on Facebook and give us a like, that would be great. Uh, and different articles on Facebook about um uh, some of the guests that we have on, as well as some of the occurrences. I, one of the articles I'm thinking of particularly is this this boat, beautiful boat stolen uh, right out of uh, somebody's yard. Um, just really shameful, and uh, it's the reality of the of this uh, of what we live in today. And um, you got to protect what you got. You work hard for it. You got to do what you can to protect it. Anyway, uh, as we come back, uh, my my co-host Pam Worth, one of the top female anglers in Florida. Good morning, Miss Pam. Good morning, sir. And, uh, of course, we have Captain Hook. He's back there. He's working feverishly trying to make everything uh, cooperate because we've had technical issues all morning long, haven't we? Absolutely. I'm earning my keep today, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> there Gremlin, we go. Gremlins and electronics. <laughs> well, I asked Miss Victoria to call in, uh, and I think she's on the line now. Good morning, Miss Victoria. Oh, she substituted me, Rizgella. <laughs> oh, look you there. Your voice has changed. My goodness. Yeah, it's a stress. You know, it gets deeper when I get stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dennis. How are you, my friend? Good. I'm fine. How's everyone there? Doing we're holding well. up. Yeah, we're holding up. Uh, what's going on in the water around your area? Cause I'm curious with the, because you're so close to the Boynton Inlet there. Right. Um, this, uh, the uh, the mullet are in, thick, um, which brings the snook and the jack and, and everything else. So uh, back fishing in the intercoastal has been uh, on fire. Wow. Um, just getting your bait in front of them. So, uh, yeah, the snook, snook fishing has been really good uh, early in the morning and then uh, especially at night. Uh, I miss the mullet run I next year. It's on my list of things to come back and do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when they when a the mullet runs, you have to go out fishing. Yeah. Absolutely, the timing so, just was not great this year. I, I think it, you said I think you said thick, right? Thick. Yeah, it's still breaking up, as as in a whole bunch of them. Correct. Yeah. Wow. So, are, are you yeah. are are they close enough where you can net them, and use them for bait? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they're all over. Uh, the inlet all over our beach. Um, uh, also greenies too. Wow. So the, the greenies have mixed in with the mullet. Um, so we can cancel them right off, right off our dock. Wow. Um, and normally this, this is the time of year where I just cast net, um, mullet and, uh, my freezer would be full of frozen mullet, <laughs> for the, you know, <laughs> just bag them and freeze them, bag them and freeze them right. until it's full. Right. So you have, right. you know, chunk bait when you go out. I, I hope you, that's a second uh, freezer out in the garage or something and it's not mixed <laughs> with your prime rib. <laughs> uh, you know, well, I'm curious. Uh -oh. <laughs> Dennis, you know, when you did that, when you, when you would freeze them like that, would you freeze them in salt? No, I would just, uh, Freeze them in uh, a ten gallon or a gallon bag, uh, mm -hmm. like a, a Ziploc. Yeah, I just lay them in there, stack them, and freeze them, and, and that was it. Because you always use them for you know chunk bait and everything else. Uh, later, I had a, later in the year. year, years ago, I had a friend of mine who was really phenomenal with a cast net. I mean, this guy would just just make your jaw drop with what he could do with a cast net. And, and I don't remember how big the net was, but it was pretty big. Um, and he would go out and he'd get ballyhoo and mullet and whatever. And he would store them uh, several ways. One was just like you're describing, just in a, if he's going to use it in a short period of time, he just put it in the bag. But if he was going to store it for like three or four months, uh, one of the ways was he'd, he'd 
just pour salt all over it and then freeze it like that. The other way was he'd literally freeze it in water in a container, put it in a container of some sort, fill it with water, and then uh, not cap it until it's completely frozen. Once it's frozen, then cap it. And he, he said he could keep it like that for like a year and then slowly thaw it out mm-hmm. and you could use it and it would still be, you know, look like it was fresh. So apparently the water, freezing it in the water really kept it uh, from freezer burn and, and gave it the ability to, to last a long time. Right. If I uh, <clears throat> don't vacuum seal my, my fish that I catch, uh, sometimes I'll do that also. I'll just put some water in a Ziploc bag mm-hmm. and then uh, freeze the fillets actually in the water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do that. Uh, and, and it does. Yeah, it protects it and, and it, it lasts so much longer. It's, it's so much better when it's thawed out. Now, do you use a little so trick that a lot it? of people don't think of um, when you dethaw? Do you dethaw it in salt water, in just ocean water, or just let it sit on the deck and dethaw? I normally just um, run it under fresh water. Oh, in fresh. Okay. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah. I just if it's uh, in a container, I'll just leave it in the container with whatever water. If I, if it's frozen in the water, I'll just leave it in a container. Take it out early in the morning if I'm going to cook it later in the day. And once once the water is is, is thawed out, I'll put it in a strainer of some sort and then uh, stick it right around that time is in the afternoon. So it would be a couple of hours before we get ready to cook. So stick it in the refrigerator, help dry out the meat so the meat's not real wet when you cook it. And, that, you know, for me, that works out perfect. Okay, I leapfrog. I was talking. I went right back to bait. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about fillets. I don't think I, we were talking about bait. I, I jump back to bait. You know, I have that random mind. It doesn't go. Well, we know what you have on your mind as soon as the show's over. You know, it's hooky time. That's right. It's like <laughs> get the heck out of Dodge and go meet a couple of my friends and see if we can't pull a couple of reds in. Oh, my goodness. Which will be no fillets here. As you know, uh, pretty much a good part of the west coast of Florida has uh, CPR, Catch, Photograph, mm-hmm. and Release, which I love. I mean, we need it after the red tide and it just give yeah. our fisheries a chance to regroup and recoup. Yeah, I had that uh, a young man on a while back who was diving out there, and he gave a positive report about how um, – the snapper uh, have come back so very well because of uh, the sanctuary that they have created for him. Yeah, I was talking to uh, a diver two days ago, and they were out, and he said he was really impressed by the amount of gag grouper that there was. He goes, they're not really of any size. You couldn't take them yet. He goes, but next year they're going to be really something because, because there was a lot of little ones out there, a lot of little ones. So yeah, everybody wins. My kind of deal. Everybody wins. I love that kind of yeah. stuff. And the mangrove snapper here on the West Coast has been off the charts. I think it's one of the best years ever for mangrove snapper. Yeah, that's what that young man was. I can't remember his name. He was a couple of them. They they do a lot of diving and fishing in the areas out there. And he was saying, and I had asked him specifically about what do you see with regard to the snappers because it was a sanctuary on them, right? There was a, I don't a sanction or whatever it's called. You couldn't keep them. <laughs> and uh, it paid back. It, it paid back. Mm-hmm. So, Dennis, have you done yeah, any sometimes fishing? If you... I'm sorry? Uh, I apologize. I, I spoke over you. Have you done any fishing? Um, just for uh, just for some, uh, some snook. Uh, I had a few uh, off, break-offs. Off of the um, uh, dock? Yeah, off the dock. Yeah, the problem is with snook, they love to pull to uh, wrap under the pilings. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I've never seen a fish that will just do that so quickly and so with so much finesse <laughs> if there's structure they'll run and, and just get tangled up in there and break your line yep what are you running you know, what size snook it. are you pulling out pardon me what size snook how big are oh, they oh they're um you it's um they they really vary i mean you'll get some some big girls in there and some small ones, and you know, sometimes snook fishing, you have to, uh, oh, maybe eat fish, you'll get a slot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's some, um, just because uh, of the area, we have the uh, spillway from the freshwater, which is a constant snook, uh, snook area, mm-hmm. uh, where the canal drains into the intercoastal. Um, that's, uh, it's pretty much a go to in our area. Uh, Captain Rick Murphy actually filmed the show there oh. uh, for Snook. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then plus, you know, with the inlet being across, you know, we have a nice flow of water and a nice flow of Snook. 
So when they're in there, yeah, yeah, you have the Boynton Inlet almost literally in your backyard, almost. And, Correct. Uh, yeah. So, so have Correct. you been fishing in the inlet or, or near the inlet? I know you, you know you said you you've done some stuff off the dock and it was pretty hot. What about on the other side where anybody can go? It's open to the public. Right. Um, I have not been over there. So just between schedules, it's, it's, it's easier for me to just run off the dock at night <laughs> before I have to get up and go to work. <laughs> so it's a lot more peaceful. Uh, it's I'm a sure. convenient thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot so, more but, peaceful. Um, I'm sure. Right. But, you know, uh, I'm sure I'm positive that the snooker also just cruising through the island also. Hmm. Your area is a beautiful offshore area. I've fished in a kayak a couple times, and I have a couple buddies that are guides that fish out of there. And I was looking at their Facebook and Instagram uh, accounts yesterday, and they're pulling sails, uh, big kingfish, and a, and a couple nice wahoos out of that area. And that's just yeah, a couple um, miles offshore. Yeah, one of, uh, one of my friends went out, and they got uh, some blackfin tuna. Uh, Sweet. Last week. Nice. So Pam, have Black you been are out there? Um, Go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, so black fins are out there and uh, also some kings. Mm-hmm. And the sails are always around. I-, I wanted to ask Pam, have you been through that inlet on your kayak? No. No. Okay. I launch off a no. beach. No. <laughs> was that I was quick enough? Say, Lord have mercy. <laughs> no, I don't know. I've I have not gone out the Hillsborough Inlet. I have not gone out the Boynton in it. No. It's I can, it's, I, I can testify uh, about about the Boynton Inlet because that was one of the inlet was one of my favorite inlets uh, to run around on my jet ski. You uh, talk about hopping and popping, boy. It's uh, it is a treacherous inlet, and and for the life of me. It, you, you know, you, you kind of go through the inlet, and all of a sudden it makes a sharp curve, depending upon which way you're coming, to the right or the left, whether you're coming in or going out. And uh, as you're you're making that curve, the waves are coming, beating your boat sideways. So you got to be really careful. If you're not careful going through, in and out of that inlet certain times, you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. Yeah. No, we, yeah it's I, so uh, narrow, and it's just concrete walls. Um, so all the r- waves refract off the, wall, off the sides. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have all your boat traffic. Uh, it, it's, it's treacherous sometimes. Yeah. We've had boats just go right into the wall. Wow. I, I, I was in a jet ski. Sideways. I was on a jet ski and almost got slammed up against the wall. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you can imagine. And jet skis are pretty maneuverable. You, can, you know, I could do quite a bit on my jet ski. And even with everything that I tried, I got pretty close to being slammed up against that wall. It is. It's one of those places where you got to be careful. But you know, in those kind of places is where you find really, you know, to me, where you find the fishing, right? Yeah, because you got the yeah. water moving. Right, because you got water moving so quickly in and out of the place. Yeah, it's a great. It's a great area to fish too, because they have a park there. Uh, they have uh, uh, cleaning stations, um, and then you actually have the uh, the other side. Uh, on the ocean side, they have the little jetty pier. Yeah. So it's really yeah. a great place to fish. So that little pier thing is still there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I went there a few years ago, and I thought, hey, this is really nice. Right there on the channel, right, you know, great place to fish, lots of rocks, so you have to be careful. But uh, lots of rocks for the fish to hide out in, and... um of course, the ones that hide out in the rocks are the little ones, and then the big ones come along to get the little ones. And it's, you know, usually depending upon whether the tide's coming or going. I, I try to fish on an incoming tide, and uh, sometimes I would fish there, and it would be really, really hot, really going. Yep. Every time I go out there, someone's always catching fish of some species. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, so, Miss Pam, that's going to be know, one of the places that, uh, you know, at, at the end of the – Inlet though it's a uh, it's a little easier at the end of the inlet it's not quite so bad it's just in the inlet itself and in the particular curve that we kept talking about uh, that would be a place to take your kayak you can put it in on the ocean side I'm pretty sure I have a couple places along Boynton that I found um, that are real it's a little tough to drag your kayak down to it but it's a nice launch once you get down there water's usually fairly calm. And uh, you don't have to deal with the current and the other boats. 
Oh, my. Well, you see, when we're having fun, you see what happens? We're up against the break again so quickly. It seems like we just started, didn't it? My goodness. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for calling. I greatly appreciate it. Wish you a wonderful day. Enjoy it. It's going to be gorgeous today. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're up against the break. Please don't go away. We will be right back. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well, then. Listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561 792 9600. Hi, folks. I'm Roger from Roger's Got Your Motoring. If you need a local auto repair shop, Roger's Got Your Motoring will take care of all of your automotive repair needs. If you need something as simple as an oil change or as complex as an engine overhaul, I have the latest in technology and the knowledge to get the job done right. We've been servicing Pinellas County since 1994 and are conveniently located at 3700 Fifth Avenue North in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you need service, call now at 727-327-1830 or visit my website at www.rogersgotchamotoring.com or like my Facebook page at Rogers Gotcha Motoring for a complete list of all of our services. So come on over to Rogers, that's me, and get your car service today. And don't forget to shop and support local business. Call now to book your appointment at 727-327-1830. That's 727-327-1830. Or swing on by. Que Pasa Mexican Cantina is where friends and neighbors come to connect, share, and celebrate one another in a festive, casual atmosphere. Offering rich, robust flavors of authentic Mexican cuisine, we use only the freshest, finest ingredients. We chop and dice, season and blend, and then cook everything we serve to perfection. One thing that makes Mexican food even better is one of our delicious Best of the Bay margaritas. Our signature series of margarita flavors range from our sweet and fruity mango and strawberry to our hot and juicy jalapeno margarita. Having a busy meeting, or getting together and looking for Mexican food? Try our Fast Facts form. It's an easy, fast way to order your favorite Mexican food. We have special platters and layouts for any occasion. The form is super easy to fill out. Fax, email, or just call it in. Whether it's here in the restaurant, in your home or office, at k Pasa, we celebrate bringing people together. k Pasa Mexican Cantina, 10478 Roosevelt Boulevard, North Street, in the Gateway Shopping Center, 727-330-3663 in St. Petersburg. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. on the WDBF Radio Network. And now, your host, Riscola Stevens. All right, uh, good morning to you. It is the last segment of the show. Again, if you've missed any of the show, you can always tune in at 3 p.m. We do replay the show at 3 p.m. Uh, we have a wide variety of ways you can listen to the show. You can actually call uh, call the show. We have a, a, a phone number that you can call. Um, to the show, and uh, again, I, I don't have the number in front of me, but <laughs> uh, I'll get that in just a second and announce it again. Um, you have a phone that you can call. You can find us online at the com, wdbfradio.com. Uh, you can use the TuneIn app, the free version of the TuneIn app. You can find us under wdbf.fm. Uh, plenty of ways to find us, plenty of ways to tune in. I hope that you would share with your friends. Go on Facebook, give us a like. Uh, it makes us a little more relevant in searches. We always try to have something interesting for you the other uh, on the other side of the microphone to, to listen to. Again, today's a beautiful day. I hope you get out there and enjoy it. 
Um, and uh, with me this morning, I have um, uh, Pam Worth, one of the top female uh, kayak anglers here in Florida. Um, a good morning to you, Miss Pam. Good morning, sir. And and I have some noise going on in the background. That's why you're hearing me having a hard time talking. I'm, I, and I don't think it's on your end. I think it's on my end. Something is happening over here uh, that's creating some noise and making it a little difficult uh, to carry on a conversation. And uh, I also have Steve, uh, excuse me, Captain Hook back there in the background. Uh, thank you, Captain Hook. My pleasure, my pleasure. And I think we got Captain Brett with us today. All right. And uh, Captain Brett is on the West Coast. Uh, I asked him to call in this morning and kind of give us a little bit of an update on what's going on out there on the West Coast. Good morning, Captain Brett. Good morning, good morning. It's great to be back. Thanks for having me back on. Yeah, talking about thanks for taking the time to call in. Let's uh, talk a little bit about what's going on. on the, you are on the West Coast, correct? Yep. He's here. Yes, yep. We're over in the Tampa Bay area. We've been uh, still doing pretty good. Um, you know, run, run a couple shark charters, and the mango snapper tend to be a little bit bigger this time of year, so we've been getting some some bigger sizes on the intercoastal. So we've been doing pretty well. We had some red tide blow back in from the hurricane, um, but it was only bad for a couple of days, and we just went up in the bay, and everything was fine, but the concentrations are still coming down, and uh, we're still catching lots of fish. So. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, I have uh, my co-host, Pam. She is familiar with your area quite a bit. Um, Pam has done some fishing down there as well, but now you're going, are you going to be down in that area today, Pam? Yeah, I'm going to be down uh, Pinellas Point today. So you'll be looking for reds. Yep, but you know I'm I'm closer inshore. I catch sharks as a once in a blue moon as a byproduct. Mm-hmm. But they're fun. <laughs> they are. <laughs> so Captain You're definitely Brett, not a redfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, that's a great area around there. Uh, Captain Brett, do you you do charters? Yeah, yeah, I do charters every day. I think Pam was on last time I was on as well. Um, mm-hmm. Or you had somebody maybe was on the East Coast. Did she pay me fish on the East Coast as well? Yeah, I think I was over in Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I, I remembered uh, to be with you guys. But, yeah, um, you know, as far as you know, what I've been going after, I, again, I've been hitting plenty of snapper. The red, you know, reds and snook are the catch and release still. Again, we lost some pretty big breeders out there that go out and spawn in the ocean and come back. So we've been going easy on them as far as, you know, catch and release. But, um, yeah, Pinellas Point's great. Glenn Paw, um, fishes around there a lot. He runs a, he's on a a different show, but, uh, that's a great area. We've been finding clean water all over from the skyway up in there. So. Yeah. It's nice. It's, it's, and with the wind coming out of the north for being in a kayak, it's a nice little protected area. Yeah. And what area around the corner in there? In the cove, yep. <laughs> what areas yep. do you usually do you offer, Captain Brett? Um, I offer. I'm pretty much in state waters, nine miles out and in. So um, I've got a lot of spots around Egmont Key, um, up into the intercoastal, and then the north side of the bay, um, all the way to the Skyway, uh, and then you know three to six, maybe nine miles out. I got plenty of reef spots that are out in the in the gulf where we bottom, do a lot of bottom fishing which helps too with you know red tides um not near as bad out there so they're starting mm-hmm. to catch some pretty big fish some of the blackfin i think they got a yellowfin tuna that was pretty close to near shore here recently wow. blackfin tuna so some of the bigger uh, pelagic fish you can you can get this time of year have you seen so, any of the kings come in yet um I, I i'm hearing reports some of them are you know sitting under people's boats um I talked a little bit about this last time. They're like cobia. They're starting to come in because the water's cooling off. We're getting the cooler, dry air from the northwest. Um, so I've seen a couple. I haven't targeted them yet, but the Sun Coast Kingfish Tournament is coming up here uh, in uh, November, and should be uh, should be. Oh, actually, no. That's no. Yeah, November. That's coming up. So they're starting to come in a little bit. That's when the tuna come in, and proceed them, and then. A lot of the the kings and and some of the cobia too, but the kings will come in afterwards. But there, there's a few, not not a lot yet that mm-hmm. I've seen. I know there's Spanish all over the place. Uh, you can uh, they were in the yeah. pass between honeymoon and Caladice. One of my buddies said you could almost walk across them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good thing about mackerel. They're pretty consistent throughout the year. It's just where they are, you know, follow the bait. But they're always normally within. 
um, you know, reachable distance for just about anybody. They're a fun fish, great fight. Some people like them, some people don't. I love them. They're a little oilier, but they're, you know, great fun fish to catch. There's plenty of them. So, you know, size limits, I think 12 to the fork. You mm-hmm. get a ton of meat off of them. They're easy to fillet. It's a great, great little fish. And they'll hit anything shiny. Just yes. about. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Miss Pam, you know, I'm thinking, let's, we caught a, 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 a mackerel or a king and, um, now we want to cook it. How do you cook it? Uh, if it's me, uh, I tend to soak it and uh, bleed it right away, soak it mm-hmm. in milk and let my son smoke it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Captain Brett? Yeah, I would definitely say smoking is, I think is the best. Um, you know, I've had a, I had a, um, a friend that uh, used to own a catering business and he cooked a lot of fish and he had one pretty good idea that I think my girlfriend did it. We tried it. It was very good. We cook them flesh side down, leave the skin on one side, but you cook them meat side down. You let all that oil drip out of there and then you finish them up on the skin and man, they're fantastic that way too. A I had a friend of mine. Smoke, smoke is the best. I had a friend of mine that would stake them and then, believe it or not, soak them in like 7-Up or Sprite of some kind of a clear soda pop. And uh, when he told me that, I said, I bet you just ruins the fish. And he <laughs> he fried some up, and I was I was shocked. It really does. It takes that really strong, fishy taste out of it. And uh, so a Sprite or a 7-Up, I don't recall, was one of the two. It was one of the clear sodas. Hmm. I bet ginger ale would be good, yeah. too, yeah. and then add soy sauce at the end. So we got all kinds of ways we can cook them. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like the smoking. I like to to stake them and smoke them. That was my one of my favorite ways of doing it uh, because it kind of dried up all the oils and stuff and and took away that really strong taste. But uh, it's a fun fish to catch. Um, I, is there a limit on them? I, I know. Um, I know on the kingfish there's ahead. two, and they have to be at least twenty four inches at. 24 or 26 inches at the fork and the limit is two per person per day spanish huh. i'm not sure it's like a bushel almost it's i'll look it up <laughs> yeah the 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 kingfish that's correct the spanish mackerel um it's normally a general rule they don't have a specific now it's 12 inches to the fork on the spanish mackerel um or bigger you can keep them but as far as numbers like the bag limit i believe that it's uh, they almost set, you know, 50 to 100 pounds or something or no more. Just basically don't be greedy. Oh, my gosh. They don't have, yeah, I, really? don't, I don't think that, yeah. you know, mango snapper, there's, it's five a person. They got to be over 10 inches. There's, but I don't think with mackerel, you can, you can almost keep as many as you want. I'll have to look that up though. 15 I'm per day. sure about that. 15. 15 wow. per, per, yeah. Okay. 15 per day. There you go. That's a lot of fish. Yeah. That's still a lot of fish. Yeah. It's a lot more than dinner. I think. <laughs> We when we would go fishing it was Keep really people worried. with that yeah. yeah really when we would go fishing really most concerned about let's just make sure we have dinner you know not not so much worried about yeah. having dinner and a meal for the next two months straight but just to have a nice fresh dinner yeah I agree with you no yeah. reason to beat it up worse than that there's you know I think I was thinking of the Key West grunts those are the ones that uh. party boats and I used to catch a lot of those there's pretty much no limit but I would always you know. Just how many people do we got to feed? I ask the client, and then we kind of break it up, you know, per person, how many fish. Mm-hmm. And there's there's no reason to overdo it. And then certain species, again, you know, right now, I think snook and redfish, we should be catch and release on those. It's, a, you know, I think, I don't know if they still have that as a rule, FWC. They, they were requiring that for a little while. but It's catch and release um, until May 10th of 2019. There you go. So, that is why I have Miss Pam on with me right there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know your rules. Yeah. You know your rules. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So many rules, so well, many regulations. Some of the, you know, and it's the captains that went to Tallahassee and asked FWC to, to include Tampa Bay in the uh, catch and release. And yeah. what a blessing because they know that the fish, it's your partner. I mean, you lose mm-hmm. your partner and, you know, close down the operation. So, and, and, and a lot of the charter guys are, uh, some of them are finding it a little difficult, but they're now teaching about ecology and about, you know, don't be a glutton, take care of the earth. So that, that's I, right. And that's what makes your paycheck. Exactly. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, it doesn't. And, to me, it doesn't make sense. Some of the stuff that goes on. Uh, Captain Brett, if somebody's interested in having you, you know, take them out, how do they do that? Um, you can reach me at uh, my website www.sunrisefishingadventure.com, or you can reach us on Facebook. But that, that's a different domain. Domain that's with an S. That's um, Sunrise Fishing Adventures with an S uh, at Facebook. And then you can call us, call or text 727-551-1370, and, um, and we'll get you set up. We run four-hour charters, six-hour charters, morning or afternoon, and we go every day as long as the, the weather's good and, um, and we're safe. That's it. And if somebody calls you, like, on a Sunday, you typically can uh, have them taken care of, say, how long does it take to set them up? Uh, it kind of depends on the time of year, but I normally have availability right away. I don't do a lot of the coupon sites we, we used to do to get started. Um, uh-huh. We've got all repeat business now, so a lot of times I can get you within the week. And sometimes, yeah, the next day. Weekends fill up wow. pretty quick, Saturdays and Sundays, obviously. But, uh-huh. you know, days during the week, I can normally get you in within a few days or within the week, at least, I would say. And I know this is a silly question, but just in case anybody's wondering, you take care of everything, right? All I need to do is just get on the boat. That's it. That's it. All rods, reels, fish, you know, tackle, uh, bait. Um, we do guarantee fish. Uh, we've never been skunked. Um, and, good for uh, you. We lay the fish for you when we get back, and i got restaurants that will cook it for you, too. Wow. My goodness. Oh. Yeah, you I, you uh, talk about turnkey. I, I'm going to talk to you we later on about which restaurants will cook it for you. I don't know if you heard sure, you say it again, Pam. I, I'm going to call you later on unless you want to tell us which okay. restaurants will actually cook it for you. Yeah, if it's okay for me to mention them. Yeah, um, sure. There's uh, any of the Krabby Bills. I send. I had um, 45 people at one of the Krabby Bills one day. I had all my buddies <laughs> down from high school. They'll cook them. Um, we ran like two or three charters. We fed everybody. It was pretty cool. But they'll um, wow. blacken them. Um, fry them, grill them any way you want them. And I think it's about nine bucks a person. They give you a couple sides with you know, each person. That nice. includes two sides. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and then one of my favorites is um, sea critters right on the water in Paso Grill. It's next to ah. the wharf. Um, I take a lot of their staff fishing, and they uh, they do a great job cooking it for you as well. Same price, two sides with it, nine bucks. Um, grill it, fry it, pan sear it any way you want it. Excellent. Blacken it. <laughs> I love it. You, know, you talk about turnkey. You catch it. You don't. Even, they'll clean it for you. They'll tell you where to take it to have it cooked. Oh my goodness, that's like a dream come true. And we should say, Captain, <laughs> Captain Brett is very reasonable price. He's not one of, like one of these real high high priced uh, charter boats. He's, he's very reasonable. And he's a local. He's Thank been you. doing it for just a couple of days, from what I. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep, thank you. I try to match, I try to keep the same price as what a lot of the, you know, the big party boats that take a lot of people out. They do a good job. They go out real far. It's a cheap way to get out into some deep water. Uh, you're just around a lot of people. So my market niche yeah. is more of a, a private charter for about the same price. Um, you know, but there's normally about three or four people on the boat. You might share the boat with one or two other people, but, you know, it's as personal as it can get that way. And as long as I fill the boat, we do pretty well. You don't even touch the bait and bait the hook for you, take the fish off for you, I love it. do everything. I love it. Uh, well, we are, you know, it's, it, I always can tell when we're having a good time. Completely out of time again. So we'll be back in a week, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank you, it. Captain. Everybody have a great day.